This is now something from physics one. I would have to, did I give you the mass of the wire? No, I would have to give you the mass, right? So let's say a wire of mass 345 grams, let's say. But it's, it's turned around so that it's got 26 turns. So the total mass is 345 grams. So uh, what, would its, um, what would its moment of inertia be? Well, the wire just looks like this, right? So the wire, the, the mass is just, um, I mean, the moment of inertia is just mr squared, because all of it is concentrated at a distance of r. OK, but I don't really know the, r, the radius. But I could do this. I could say pi r squared is equal to the area, right? Therefore, uh, r squared is the area, the magnitude of the area, divided by the pi. So I don't really need to find the radius. I could just simply do the radius squared is area over pi. And we, we already have the area vector, right? So we just take the magnitude of the area vector divided by pi, that gives you the r squared. So this one becomes um, the magnitude is equal to square root of 4 plus 9 plus uh, 25. And then since it's centimeter squared, so change it to meter squared, 10 to the minus 4, divided by pi. That's, the, that's equal to r squared. Magnitude of area divided by pi. So we don't really need the r. Then we just multiply this by the mass m that gives you the moment of inertia. So put it in there. The mass m is 345 grams, so 0.345 kilogram times square root of, uh, that's 13, uh, and 25 is 38 over pi. That's the moment of inertia. Five? Yeah. That's small? Negative five? Negative five? Yeah. Okay. Okay, now when I, uh, I wanted to find the angular acceleration. So take the magnitude of the torque. So the torque was point 0.1. And then the moment of inertia we just calculated. So uh, calculate alpha. That's going to be pretty fast. It's going to rotate really quickly. So 10 to the fifth, uh, it's going to be um, 10 to the fourth divided by 6.77. Hmm. One point that's rads per second. One point four eight, so one thousand four hundred and eighty radians per second. That coil is gonna turn like crazy. 
OK, so now part B, what is the initial potential energy? The potential energy, remember, is the negative mu dotted into B, not the cross product. So, uh, so the initial potential energy is simply you just take the dot product of the area vector with the magnetic field. Um, so you have minus, remember the mu was 62, the number, the number of turns, no, sorry, 26 was the number of turns times the, uh, the current times 10 to the minus 4. Then you take the dot product of 2 It's going to be 12, negative 3, negative 3 is 9, 5 and uh, negative 4 is, uh, 5 and negative 4 is negative 20. Oh, that's almost was, uh, that, that was almost 0. <laughs> if it had been 0, that means the, um, if it's 0, what does that mean? If the dot product had been 0, what would that mean? Exactly. So you guys are thinking. That's perfect. That means the coil is oriented something like this. This one is almost zero. Is it positive or negative? It's positive. So that means the angle is a little less than 90 because cosine of, a, 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 of the angle less than 90 is positive. So it looks something like this. Let's say the magnetic field is uh, oriented this way. This picture looks something like this. Okay, the angle is close to 90, as close as you can get, really, you know. It's close to 90, but it's not 90. And the thing is going to turn like this, and it's going to turn until it faces the exact opposite, like this, like that. It's going to like that. It's going to turn like that, okay. <clears throat> okay, so what is that equal to? So pretty much this is just one, so whatever this thing is. Like that, negative 2.08. Or you could say negative 2.08 millijoules if you wanted to like, make it a little bit more uh, meaningful. You can say it that way, 2.08 millijoules. Um, 